Wow. The 10 year note is screaming higher day two. Will this continue tomorrow? I don't know, but it certainly seems like the trend is higher and higher. I want to know what's going on with mortgage. What's going on in the industry. We got the boys from convoy Dustin. How you doing? Good. How are you, Mike? I'm guessing over the last couple of days, you've been watching mortgage rates go higher and higher. It's uh, it's probably been, I don't know if you could step out of it for a minute. Interesting to watch, but probably in it, it doesn't feel very good. Yeah, and, and it, it was obviously hard for us because over the last month, we've seen it kind of bounce back and forth between that six and seven line, right? And um, every time we are in a one or two day window of rates have been coming down, you know, clients mindset starts to change a little bit um hey i want to wait to lock or i want to wait you know i think we might get a little bit better pricing but i've been saying this for the last you know two years if you like it lock it and yeah last two years the risk reward just isn't there the the risk of rates going higher significantly higher you know higher than the chances of getting rewarded with a lower rate yeah and i I think the highest rate we saw in the last 12 months was 7.37. I actually didn't check where they are this morning. You might know, or, or Mortgage Daily will, will come out later. But it feels like that that might be broken uh, here in the next couple of weeks. At least it feels it's possible. Yeah, so we have our own. We don't use the Mortgage News Daily. Maybe it's a, uh, a different way that we kind of calculated internally. We have access to all the different like conventional lenders. And that's what we'll always base kind of your 30 year fix on. Um, right now, this morning, I checked before hopping on the show is at 722. So, okay. you know, I think it was at 709. And just from kind of the overnight trickling into this morning sell off, um, you know, when's it going to stop? I don't know. We'll have today's Thursday. Sorry. I was on trip, uh, got back yesterday. So I'm a little bit out of, <laughs> out of sorts. Uh, but tomorrow we've got job reports. We'll see what that does. We got inflation next week. I don't think it's going to save us that much, but well, I, let's play with that a little bit because I I actually think we're set up for potentially two bad numbers. And what do I mean by it's bad? Whatever. So tomorrow, I think five thirty a.m. we get the jobs number for July. If it continues on trend and it blows it out, that's going to bring a September rate hike into the equation, which currently I think today it's out. That's a problem. Then you're right. We get CPI next week. And I don't know if people realize this, but the base effect that was our friend the last two months, not our friend this month. CPI headline might go up, folks. Buckle up. And that's why I think that that 737, which I think was the cycle, the current cycle peak, might be uh, might be might be broken here soon. Yeah, and I, and I think that's obviously on the table as well. Um, you know, the we're seeing rates go up right now because the sentiment, even though like you've alluded to, the odds are that there's not going to be a September rate hike as of today. As right? of and today, as of right now. Yeah. <laughs> as of now. Um, but if the sentiment keeps getting pushed to the fact that, you know, the feds might raise in September or the chances are five percent higher that they might raise in September, which we'll see from the job reports tomorrow and yep. CPI next week. That's why rates are going up right now. Exactly. That's the reason. Yeah. I don't think the average person realizes the mortgage rate, those adjust instantly. Right. They're not waiting for the Fed to raise rates and they go, oh, okay, great. We'll go up 25 basis points too. Right. <laughs> it, it's it's already priced in. Hence the Fed raised last month and then rates went down because they took September off the table, at least at that meeting. So, um, yeah, I, I think we have a couple of economic numbers in front of us, Dustin, that are, uh, I don't know, leaning towards higher for longer. Yeah, and that's what uh, I I don't want to pretend like I called this, but I thought we would be on this train for a while when three, six months ago, people thought it was going to stop and pause and all that. But um, you know, we'll see in the, in the next week and we'll have our video next week. And maybe we're talking about rates that are at seven, five, you don't know. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and we're, we're talking here owner rocket. If we're looking at investor loans, they're in the eights today, right? Yeah, I, th I think, um, so I did one actually late last night that I was pricing out for a client comparing, it was basically a 30% down conventional two unit purchase. Okay. okay. 
but I wanted to give them the options going, you know, full Docker conventional versus a DSCR. Um, the starting rate for conventional was at 7.875. That was just your par rate. Now okay. You could have still brought it down to 6.8, um, but the starting rate for DSCR was at 7.5, but the lowest he could buy it down to was 7.1. Okay. So, you know, it's kind of pick or choose depending which rate you're going to want. It's strange right now, given the current landscape, that bar rates are still lower on DSCR. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see a jump because when DSCR moves, they move. And we take it like the elevator, right? They're going to wake right. up one. Yeah, it might be half a point different. And I think yep. that's going to happen sometime between now and September. Yeah. DSCR loans, I think, are one of the things we have to watch for. If I was a betting man, and frankly, I am, uh, <laughs> um, I suspect we have a lot less access to DSCR loans come the end of the year. Um, so again, if you like it, lock it, I think is 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 important. Completely agree. They're, they're starting to get, you'll see, if, if you have a conversation with, with John and myself, they're really starting to hammer in the cost of like prepayment penalties on DSCR loans, like they used to not be as expensive, yeah. for example, if you wanted to get like a no prepay DSCR. Now you're talking like literally 250 basis points different in cost if you want a no prepay versus like a five-year prepay, which yeah. is uh, almost three times more than what it used to be about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Folks, at the end of the day, if you are looking and shopping for real estate investing, which again, I think you should always be doing the work, writing good or great deals, working with folks with Convoy Home Loans is a great idea because they will give you the options. It's not just conventional. It's just not DSCR. And of course, if you've seen in their playlist, they are constantly bringing more and more products to market. Uh, how should they reach out to you, Dustin? They just go to our website, convoyhomeloans.com and mention you came from ORAT. Again, Telling him came from ORAT is important because that means you get Dustin or Jonathan. If you just go there and you don't mention ORAT, you get somebody else and you don't want somebody else. All right, buddy. Take care.